March Madness is right around the corner and I can't wait. What's up everybody, this is Kieran. This video will give you data and statistics to help you pick the round one games of the NCAA tournament. Let's start off by looking at seed analysis. I'm using data from 2001 to 2024. And of course, in the COVID year of 2020, there was no tournament. So this is 23 years of tournament game data. And in those 23 years, the one seed over here in the far left, this is one versus 16, has won all but two games. So am I gonna pick a 16 seed to be the one seed in round one? Of course not. There's no way I'm gonna pick against those odds. In a similar way for the two seed and the three seed, these are hovering around 90%. Now, there's no way, shape or form, I'm gonna pick against a 90% trend. So I'm gonna pick all my two seeds and all my three seeds to win in round one. Now finally for the four versus 13, I'm also gonna pick the four seeds. Now obviously there's more upsets over here in the 13 versus the four, but if you think for a second, how many times would anyone pick the 13 over four and get that right? Did you have 13 seeded Yale to beat the four seeded Auburn Tigers in the 2024 tournament? I doubt very many people had that pick. So, and if you picked a different 13 seed to beat a four seed in 2024, then not only did you get that one wrong, because that was the only upset, Yale versus Auburn, but you also miss a Yale upset. So that would be two misses. So for all those reasons, I'm gonna pick one, two, three, and four seeds to win in round one. Since there are four regions, this is 16 games, and that's half of the first round games. Now the other seed pairings are where we see some upsets. Check this out. Five versus 12, 60% for the five. Six versus 11, more 11 seeds upset the six seeds than the 12s versus the fives. That shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but we see a lot of people talk about the 12 upsetting the five, but it's really the 11 versus the six where they receive more upsets. Now over here, the seven versus the 10 and the eight versus the nine, a lot of people don't call these upsets because they're too close. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna talk about the lower seed versus the higher seed. I'm gonna talk about these as upsets. So I'm looking at the eight versus the nine, a virtual coin flip. That's gonna be not easy to pick upsets there. So for these kind of games, we're gonna rely on the data and statistics to show us which teams to pick to win round one. And what stats are we gonna to use to guide us? Of course, the Ken Palm stats. <laughs> this is a snapshot of the Ken Palm website on February 23rd, 2025, three weeks before the 2025 Selection Sunday. And I'm gonna highlight the stats we're gonna use for this video. Those stats are the net rating, previously called the adjusted efficiency margin, offensive rating, defensive rating, and the adjusted tempo. That's the pace at which these teams play. The net rating is simply the offensive rating minus the defensive rating. The offensive rating is basically how many points the team scores per 100 possessions. The defensive rating is how many points they allow per 100 possessions. And the adjusted tempo is basically how many possessions they have per game. And we're gonna use all these stats to help us make predictions for round one. Now I showed the scatter plot last year and I updated it with the 2024 tournament data the blue dots are the teams that won in round one, and the orange dots represent teams that lost in round one. On the horizontal axis here, we have the defensive rating. So the lower the defensive rating, the better. So as it goes from left to right, we see more orange dots. That's because those teams have worse defenses. On the vertical axis is the offensive rating. As we go up here, a higher offensive rating means they score more points per 100 possessions. That means the team is better on offense. So a team is better on offense as we go up, and the team is better on defense as we go from right to left. And as I showed last year, I'm gonna draw some boundary values to help us make predictions on round one games. The first boundary value is 120.7 on offensive rating. Any team above this rating wins at 87%. So I know that's just a few teams up here, but we know for sure that these are the best offensive teams in the country, and they win at 87% in round one. And then on the bottom here, we have 105.2. Teams with an offensive rating below 105.2 lose at 90%. The rest of these boundary values are going to be at 90%. So we can pick those teams to lose in round one. Now for the defensive rating, we're going to look at a vertical line here at 103.6. Teams that have a defensive rating above 103.6, remember a higher defensive rating means their defense is bad. So for all the teams with a defensive rating above 103.6, 90% of them lose in round one. Now when you check this out, obviously a lower defensive rating and a higher offensive rating, we're looking at the upper left-hand corner here, those are the best teams. Those are the best teams in a tournament. And likewise, a higher defensive rating and a lower offensive rating, these are the worst teams in a tournament, right? So we're gonna look at this and divide it, not horizontal and vertically, but with a diagonal line. Now the teams above and to the left of this diagonal line, that means the offensive rating minus the defensive rating, that is their net rating. If a team has a net rating above 22.9, they win at 90% in round one. And again, we have a minimum value here. This is actually 10.0. Teams that are below this line and to the right of this line lose at a 90% rate. Let's put all the lines back in here. If you look at this region right here to the right of this diagonal line above the horizontal line here to the left of this diagonal line, 
to the left of this vertical line and below this horizontal line on top here, this is what I call no man's land. This is where a lot of blue and orange dots exist and picking which of these teams win is something that requires quite a bit more work. Before I give you the boundary values, what I wanna show you is the seeds, like the one versus the 16. It's really pretty cool when you see just the one versus 16 on this screen. Here it is. These are all the one seeds since 2001 and these are all the 16 seeds since 2001. Now check this out. You can see these upsets here. These are the two upsets. In fact, over here on the far right, this is Farley Dickinson that beat Purdue, the number one seed in 2023. And down here, this is the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. They beat Virginia in 2018. So those are the two upsets here, 16 versus one. Now, if you keep an eye on this, we're gonna look at two versus 15. You see the blue dots and orange dots start to get closer to each other. And we see a lot more upsets down here with the 15 seeds. In fact, I think there's eight of those since 2001. The three versus the 14, the four versus the 13, the five versus the 12, the six versus the 11. Check out where these dots are headed. They're all headed towards this region that I highlighted earlier. We have the seven versus the 10, and finally the eight versus the nine. Because of this final picture here, because of the way these progressed, I know that these boundary values are the right values to pick when it comes to who wins and who loses in round one. So how can we use this information to pick the winners for round one? Let's check it out. Round one predictions with the Ken Palm stats. So on the top row here, we see that if a team has an offensive rating above 120.7, then they win their first round game at 87%. In a similar way, if their net rating is above 22.9, they win at 90%. If a team has an offensive rating below 105.2, that was the bottom horizontal line, then they lose at 90% of the time. If a team has a defense rating above 103.6, they lose 90% of the time in round one. And finally, if a team has a net rating below 10.0, they lose 90% of the games in round one. So these are how you predict teams that win and lose in the first round using Kim Palm stats. But let me just say here, these are actually the good teams. So these are like your one through four seeds, and these are the bad teams down here. So that would be like the 13 through the 16 seeds. So we're still not looking at the teams in between. Let's take a look at those. How do we pick upsets? Now we're going to look at the five versus 12, six versus 11, seven, 10, and eight, nine. And that's where we're going to look for our upsets. Like I said, I'm not going to pick against a one, two, three, or four seed. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not that sharp. And honestly, I don't think there's very many people out there who can pick a 13 versus a four. So here's where we're going to pick our upsets. They're going to be the ninth for the 12 seeds. Now, again, we're going to use the Ken Palm stats here, and this is what we're looking at. L means that's the lower seed, that's the 9, 10, 11, or 12, and H means a higher seed, so that's the 8, 7, 6, or 5. So if a lower seeded team has a higher tempo, this is a team that plays at a faster pace than a higher seeded team, and if a lower seed has a better offensive rating than a higher seed, then those teams, since 2021, have won seven and lost five. In other words, they've won 58.3% of their games in round one. I have to say here, I'm only going back to 2021. I'm only using the last four years. That's because the NCAA updated their net rating tool. And because of that, that actually made a difference in how these teams were seeded. Since 2021, the last four years, these teams, the lower rated teams, have won 58.3% of the time. Again, the lower seeded team here is a faster team, a faster pace, and a more efficient offense than the higher seeded team. Kind of the flip side of that is the following. This is where the lower seeded team has a slower tempo. They played a slower rate than the higher seeded team and they have a stronger defense. So they're kind of keeping the game at a slower pace here. This might be one of those first round games where the games don't get out of the 60 points, maybe 60 to 58 or something like that. And maybe the lower seeded team hits a buck at the end of the game to win it. They kept it close. They got lucky at the end and they beat the higher seeded team. These teams since 2021 have won eight games and lost five in the round one. So they won 61.5% of the time. And this is the way we're going to pick our upsets. Now, I know that's a lot to think about, but when I make my full Ken Palm bracket on Selection Sunday, I'll make sure I highlight these particular upsets. So finally, I'm going to show you one more chart here. I've actually created a machine learning model. This is in the blue using the Ken Palm stats and the seedings and a few other variables. And since 2022, this is just the last three years, this particular model won 27 to 32 games in 2022. 23 in 2023 and 25 last year in 2024. The upset model is in orange. That's what I just showed you. This is 27, 22, and 23. And then in the gray, this is where you just simply pick the higher seed to win. This is like our benchmark for any kind of model that we come up with, any kind of strategy. We always want to compare it to just simply betting the higher seeded team to win. In 2022, the higher seed won 22 to 32 games, 25 in 2023. So the higher seeded teams actually won pretty good in 2023 and then 21 last year in 2020. So let's just quickly summarize this. My machine learning model, which I'm not gonna give out the details here, I don't wanna give out all my secrets. Went 75 and 21 for the last three years for a 71.8% win rate. The upset model, which I showed you in this video, went 72 and 24 for a 75% win rate. And again, if you just simply pick the highest seed to win, that's all chalk. 
that went 68 and 28 for the last three years for a 70.8% win rate. So I like the fact that both these models are better than simply just picking the highest seed to win. In my next video, I'm going to go to complete opposite of the tournament and show you how to pick the contenders, the championship teams using Ken Palm stats. See you then.